Good morning and welcome to worship today at St. Paul Lutheran Church. A very special welcome to any visitors that are with us. And of course, uh, thank you to those of you who are tuning in on Facebook or YouTube. A few announcements uh, before we begin worship concerning some little ones that we know and love here in our congregation. Uh, as I sent out a phone tree message earlier, or the later part of this last week, uh, Danielle Jasper, who you know as Danielle Ranke and her husband Trevor, welcomed uh, their son much sooner than they anticipated uh, this week. Due to complications with Danielle's pregnancy, Royce Allen Jasper was born several weeks early at four pounds, one ounce. Uh, but I am told he is doing well and holding his own in a Sioux Falls NICU. Uh, where he will remain for at least the next couple of months. So we offer our uh, petitions of thanksgiving to God for his faithfulness, uh, our petition of praise to Royce's doctors and nurses who are going to be handling his care in the next weeks ahead, and we offer our congratulations uh, to uh, grandparents Leanne and Jaris Rensink and great-grandparents Wayne and Dot Tiedemann as their clan continues to grow. In the days and weeks ahead, I will uh, let you know that there's going to be a fund established for Danielle uh, and Trevor as they uh, need help or as we help them defray some of those medical costs that they are, are uh, racking up, uh, also as they need help, uh, many trips that they're going to be making back and forth to Sioux Falls over the next couple of months. So as more information becomes available uh, in the next days, I'll make that uh, available to you as well. Also, we praise God this morning uh, that Bellamy Egdorf, uh, the daughter of Lonnie and Leah Egdorf, uh, made such great progress in the last week that she was able to come home uh, this last Monday. She was greeted ecstatically by her big sister, uh, Emberly, and is recovering and continue to grow uh, and strengthen uh, at home, surrounded by her loving family. Uh, I will note that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lonnie and Leah are not accepting visitors at their home at this time, so we respect their privacy and distance, uh, but they do want you to know how much they uh, appreciate the love, prayer, and support of their faith family here at St. Paul Lutheran. In other words, uh, God is good uh, as we see him on display fully in the lives of these two little new ones that have been brought into the world. Those are my announcements, any from the congregation before we begin worship this morning. Then I'll ask that you please rise as you are able and join me in our call to worship, which is found printed on the screen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Why should I fear? When evil people come to devour me, when my enemies and foes attack me, hear me as I pray, O Lord. Be merciful and answer me. My heart has heard you say, Come and talk with me. Teach me how to live, O Lord. Lead me along the right path. I am confident I will see the Lord's goodness. I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn. We sing together, Sing to the Lord of Harvest.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Called and gathered together by the Holy Spirit, let us come humbly before God and our brothers and sisters in the faith, confessing our sins, known and unknown, trusting in God's gracious word of forgiveness. Our holy and merciful Father, who brings life out of death and transforms us into new creatures through his redeeming word, knows the depths of our hearts completely. So let us therefore make a confession of our sin, but first let us make mention of those sins silently as we name them before God in our hearts. Lord Jesus, risen Savior, we come to you in sorrow for our faults and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. Although in Christ our light has come, we too often prefer the darkness of sin. Forgive us, fill us with your Spirit, and free us from the shackles of our failings. Give us once again the joy of your salvation and make us instruments of peace and love in the world. Amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glorious mercy of the Lord shines around you. In the name and by the authority of your Savior, Jesus Christ, I announce the forgiveness of all your sins. May the Holy Spirit strengthen your faith, heal your troubled spirit, and equip you to proclaim the greatness of the Lord until the day he comes again. Amen. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord, you reign extends across time and space. You have created us in your own image and redeemed us by your grace through your Son. Grant that we may return to you what is yours, our entire selves given to your mission in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated, and any children that are with us that would like to come up for children's chat can do so at this time. Come on up, kids. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Hi, Kennedy. Come on up. Good morning. All right. How many of you have money? like in a piggy bank, or money in a dresser drawer, or money in like a wallet or something at home. Money is kind of strange. There's all different kinds of money, and money usually has the face of someone on it, right? Do you know who's on the $1 bill? Do you know who that guy is? First president? George Washington. Very smart, okay? $1 bill has George Washington on it. Anyone know who that guy is on the $20 bill? Andrew Jackson. He was a president. I don't know which one. Don't ask me. I'm not very good at history. But money is strange because it has faces on it. And not just American money. Some money doesn't have faces on it at all. Do you know what that kind of strange uh, money, piece of money is? That's a euro. You use that in Europe. It's a $20 euro. There's no face on it. But this is also something that they use in Europe, which is a country way across the ocean. Do you know who that lady is? Do you know who that lady is? She's got a crown. Do you know who that lady is? Elizabeth II. Elizabeth II. Yeah, that's the Queen of England. So here's a funny question. Who does money belong to? People. people. Yeah, it does belong to people. Does it belong to the people who have it in their wallets, or does it belong to, does it belong to George Washington? Does it belong to Andrew Jackson? Does this money belong to the Queen of England right here? Who does money belong to? It belongs to you. And then if you give it to the bank, does it belong to the bank? And then they give it to them. It's kind of confusing, right? Who does money belong to? Now, here's an even harder question. Who do you belong to? 
Yeah, your moms, right? You belong to your moms and dads. Yeah, you belong to your moms and dads. You listen to them. Yeah, that's good. But I also heard Reagan say you belong to God, so that's kind of confusing too. Uh, do you belong to the country that you live in? Because here's my passport. Do you know what a passport is? If I want to go to some place that's far away, I have to take a passport with me that, show, that proves where I come from. Only if I have to go to a different country. And that says my name, and it has a really old picture of me, and it says where I'm from. But do I belong to my parents? Do I belong to the country that I live in? Maybe all of it. But Reagan hit the nail on the head. She said that we belong to God. And guess what? So does the money in our wallet. Today, you're going to hear Jesus in the gospel text talk about money. He's going to talk about taxes, which is something I don't want to talk to you about because it's very confusing. Uh, but giving money to the government, okay? That's what a tax is. You give money back to the government, okay? Um, but Jesus is going to say to the people who come and try to trap him with a question, he's going to say, give to Caesar, who was like the, the emperor, the king, the person in charge, what belongs to him, and give to God what is God's. Basically saying, everything belongs to God, but we use it in different ways. What are some things that we use money for? What are some things that we use money for? Food. What else do we use money for? Clothes. What else do we use money for? Yeah, shelter. All of the things that we need, these things all come from God, right? What are some ways that we can use our money to help people who might need it? We might donate it to someone who might need our help. Okay. How else might we use money? Yeah. yeah, people who might not have a place to live. Yeah, because this money belongs to God. He gives it to us to use for ourselves and to help others with. But then, Jesus said, we also have to remember that we belong to God as well. We live under our parents' house and we listen to them and that is good, but God is the one who created us. So he gives us our bodies and money and our talents and our time and all these things so that we can help others with our lives too. But most of all, God says, I want to hear from you. Okay? God says, I want you to use your bodies for good things and I want you to use your voices to praise me and I want you to use your time to help others and all of these things because everything that exists belongs to God. Okay? Fold your hands, bow your heads, and pray after me. Dear God, thank you for creating me and all that exists, for giving me money, shelter, family, talents. All these things come from you. Help me to use them in good ways to think of others and to praise you in Jesus name amen all right thanks for coming up guys you can go and sit down Dave Cruz is going to come and lead us in the word this morning first reading for this Sunday is, comes to us from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 45th chapter, reading verses 1 through 7. And in this, we will hear the words of, of Isaiah prophesizing that uh, God will choose a helper named Cyrus, who will uh, help him restore Jerusalem. And then the second thing that we will hear, God will tell Cyrus that uh, he is the only God, and, and the only God from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, and he is the God that's in control. Some very good words for us. And so then we begin with the first verse. This is what the Lord said to the anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I take hold of, to subdue the nations before him and to strip the kings of their armor to open doors before him so that the gates will not be shut. I will go before you and will level the mountains. I will break down the gates of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness, riches stored in secret places, so that you may know that I am the Lord, the God of Israel, who summons you by name. For the sake of of Jacob, my servant of Israel, my chosen, I summon you by my name. 
and my, may bestow on you a, a little bit of honor, though you do not acknowledge me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Apart from me, there is no God. I will strengthen you through you and have not acknowledged me, so that the, from the rising of the sun to the place of its setting, men may know that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. I form the light and create darkness. I bring prosperity and create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Here ends the reading. Our responsive reading for today is Psalm 96, verses 1 through 9. I will read the odd, or odd verses, and you, the congregation, will read the even verses. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared about all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. The second reading comes to us today from the New Testament book of 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter reading, verses 1 through 10. And in these words, Paul is giving thanks to the church at Thessalonica because of their faith. And so we read these words beginning then with the first verse. To the church of Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We have always thanked God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember our God and Father, your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by the hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers, loved by God, that he has chosen you, because out of the gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit, and with deep conviction. You know how we lived among you, and for your sake, you became imitators of us and of the Lord in spite of severe suffering, and you welcomed the message with your joy by giving the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Archaea. The Lord's message rang out from you, and not only in Macedonia and Archaea, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves, what kind of reception you gave us. They tell of how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his son, God, and to wait for his son to, from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescued us from the coming of wrath. Here ends the reading. I'll invite you to please rise as you are able now as we read from the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, Christ, our Lord and God. Then the Pharisees went out and laid plans to trap him in his words. They sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians Teacher, they said, we know you are a man of integrity and in that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are. Tell us then, what is your opinion? Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, knowing their evil intent, said, you hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin used for paying the tax. They brought him a denarius. And he asked them, whose portrait is this and whose inscription? Caesar's, they replied. Then he said to them, give to Caesar what is Caesar's 
and to God what is God's. When they heard this, they were amazed. So they left him and went away. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We praise you, Christ, our Lord and God. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. The old adage goes that you cannot be in two places at one time. But is that really true? During high school, on a bus trip to California, I learned that this actually isn't true because at the Four Corners Monument, you can actually stand in Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, and Utah all at once. Sprawled out on my hands and knees over the bronze disc that marks that spot, the only point In the United States, that is shared by several states. I wasn't just in two places at one time. I was in four. For anyone who has experienced this strange phenomenon of being in more than one place at a time, what makes this encounter so unique is reading the phrase that wraps itself in cement around this quadra point. It says, four states here meet in freedom under God. Today, in our gospel text, we take up this paradox, being in two places at one time, as we consider our place in two kingdoms, not just one. The earthly kingdom that we see here in the world before us, under the heavenly kingdom that we belong to through faith in Jesus Christ. Because we know the words in Philippians 3, our citizenship is in heaven, that we are claimed by God in baptism, made members of his household and family. But yet we also live here on earth where God has planted us for the time being. So the question becomes, how do I hold my identity in Christ, my Christian identity, and my worldly dealings, my life here on earth, how do I hold these two things in balance with one another? We find Christ this morning in the temple on Holy Tuesday with the cross coming into focus in the distance. In fact, he's been standing in the temple the past two days giving sermon after sermon to expose the hypocrisy of the Pharisees, who along with the temple authorities are now in full panic mode. Because this rabbi from Judea has challenged their authority in front of a gob of people who have been watching this exchange. They are desperately looking for a way in which to redeem themselves as to not look like complete fools in front of their own people. So in an attempt to restore their status, they team up with an unlikely ally, the Herodians, who were normally their adversaries. The Pharisees are religious zealot, ferociously nationalistic, totally and completely against the unfair taxes and rules that had been levied on them by the Romans. Israel had long since fell under the occupation of this pagan government, and the very thought of their people contributing to the Roman treasury was unbearable. They worshipped God alone. Particularly, they detested the fact that they had to use Roman currency with the face of the Roman emperor etched onto it. This was a direct violation of the first commandment. This was idolatry in their eyes. The Herodians, in contrast, were followers of the Herod family dynasty. When Rome rose to power over Israel, the emperor had named Herod a non-Jew as governor over Jewish people. The Herod family and the Herodians were boldly loyal to the Romans that the Pharisees hated so much. On any normal day, these two groups should have been sworn enemies, but not today. Jesus was just as much a threat to the Herodians as he was to a Pharisee, so they laid their differences aside and schemed against him together. And their plan settles on an attempt to trip Jesus up in a complex question that was, as far as they were concerned, unanswerable. He's doomed either way. We've got you, 
Jesus, they think. Because if you say that the people of Israel should not pay Roman taxes, our good friends, the Herodians, are going to haul you into the authorities for being an uncooperative rebel, and we'll never have to see or hear from you again. But if you say that Jews should pay the Roman tax, we'll stir up a mob of your own people, and you'll either be killed or ran out of town. The trap is set. They think they've backed Jesus into a corner, and now all they have to do is watch him flounder. But have you ever known our Lord Jesus to fumble in such a situation? No. He simply has them fetch a coin which is stamped with the portrait of Caesar himself, and then he says, render this unto Caesar, but render unto God what belongs to him. And here, in these words, we come to understand that this message wasn't only given for the ears of the Pharisees and the Herodians, but it's a message for us even now, 2,000 years later, that as people of God and as people of the world, we have a dual citizenship a foot in the kingdom here on earth, a temporary kingdom, and a foot in the kingdom of heaven, the eternal kingdom. But what does this mean? What it doesn't mean is that we have to pick one. This isn't an either-or situation where we choose to either honor our earthly authorities or God. It's a both-and situation. We can serve both our earthly authorities and God. So how do we get there? Well, a good place to start is with the understanding that God created everything that exists. Nehemiah says this, You alone are the Lord who has created the heaven and earth and everything that fills it, which means that when we talk about the two kingdoms in which we live, earth and heaven, we talk about both of them being formed by God. And so when we deal with our relationship with the state, the temporary kingdom of the world, we do so knowing that government and principalities, those which guide us, were ordained, and instituted by God. Paul writes this in Romans 13, let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God, for because of this you may pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing, paid to all what is owed them. Friends, God has architected an establishment earthly society in order through government. Their offices and seats of power were ordained to curb sin and promote what is good and fight against evil. And so in return, and yes, even though we don't like it, in obedience, we pay some tax. But even beyond paying taxes, we pray for our leaders and their success even when they aren't from our political party. 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 2 reads, First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. And so what is owed to our Caesar or to the United States government? We might owe some money. Some choose to serve in the military. We adhere to the laws of the land. We defend our flag and our freedoms. In the kingdom of earth, we have an obligation to support those who govern us here in this realm because even though our political leaders are deeply, deeply flawed and broken, something I don't have to tell you about, Democrat and Republican, Libertarian and Independent, our hope is that God will still use them for his purposes. King Cyrus, who we heard about in our first reading this morning, was a pagan monarch. He was an unbelieving heathen. And yet God provided through him. And yet there are things in this earthly kingdom that we cannot be provided for, which is when we turn our gaze to God through faith in our hearts, the ruling of God in heaven. 
For as Christ was emboldening us to render unto Caesar what belonged to Caesar, Jesus himself was getting ready to render his very body and blood on a cross for you and for your salvation to do what the kingdom of earth can never and will never do. The government, our leaders, civil servants, The laws that regulate our great nation still cannot provide us with what Jesus Christ provides us with. Salvation. Freedom from the power of sin, death, and the devil. An identity in the waters of baptism. Grace, mercy, and peace. And so then, because of what Christ did for us, rendering his body so that we might be holy through his blood, we have two responses. First, we give unto God what belongs to God. Our worship, our praise, our devotion, our adoration. We put our faith in him and in him alone. We confess our sin, knowing that he alone is able to forgive. We turn from our transgressions to live for him. We support the work of the church through monetary tithes, through our gifts of time and talent. We stand without question on scripture, the rock our solid foundation. We lean fully into our identity as children of God, justified totally and completely through the atonement of Jesus Christ alone. And yet we look down at our other foot, which is planted here in this corner of Northwest Iowa or wherever you might be tuning in from, and we are propelled forward to live in this kingdom of earth and to preach concerning the kingdom of heaven. We proclaim God's promises to a sin-sick world. We speak up for the least and the last of these. We advocate for those who cannot advocate for themselves. We move the wheels of democracy forward and we elect officials to sit on God-ordained seats of power, officials who will stand on the word of God instead of violating it or destroying it. And so, dear friends, we stand in two places at one time. And we wait in anticipation for the day when everything temporary here on earth will pass away and we will belong wholly and completely to the kingdom of God alone. But until that day, we see the kingdom of earth through our heavenly eyes and we give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and we keep giving to God what belongs to God. Amen. You may remain seated as we sing our hymn of the day. It is God whose giving knows no ending, and we will sing it to the tune of Lord whose love in humble service.
At this time, I'll ask you to please rise as you are able and join me in making a confession of our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we offer our prayers for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all, whatever their need may be. Good and gracious Father, we live, move, and have our being in two places at one time, physically here on earth and in heaven through our baptism into Christ. You have given us a dual citizenship, and your Son, Jesus Christ, has commanded us to render unto you what belongs to you and unto the world what belongs to the world. By the power of your Holy Spirit, turn up faith in our hearts that we would render unto you our devotion, praise, and thanksgiving for the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. But also use your church, gathered here at St. Paul Lutheran and across the world, to render unto our neighbors kindness, compassion, love, and respect. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of the nations, you promised Cyrus, a pagan unbeliever, that you would go before him, that you would call him by name, and that he would know there is no other God besides you. Go before, call by name, give your faithfulness under the leaders of the entire world today, but especially those here in the United States, our President Donald Trump, Vice President Pence, Governor Reynolds, those who enact and minister and judge our laws, that they might do their work with a spirit of wisdom and justice, that through their leadership we might be spared from violence, confusion, pride, or evil. Lord, in your mercy. God of peace, our hearts grow weary as we hear of wars, discord, violence, and division that plagues your creation. But you are our light and salvation. Who shall we fear? We give you thanks for the freedom that we have to serve you openly this day, the freedom to speak your name aloud without fear of retribution. Give your full presence unto the military men and women who serve under the United States flag, be it stateside or overseas, and they fight to make these freedoms a reality. Bless their efforts to bring about peace in your name. Heal their physical and emotional wounds and bring them home safely when their work is complete. Lord, in your mercy. Father of all mercy and consolation, you are the one who redeems our life from the pit of sickness and death. Be with those who are hopeless, those who are alien in, alien in mind, body, or spirit, that in the darkness they would find your light, in their grief they would find your joy, in their suffering they would be drawn close to you. We pray especially this morning for Bellamy Egdorf, newborn daughter of Lonnie and Leah, who is now home after an extended stay in the NICU, and for Royce Jasper, newborn son of Danielle and Trevor, who is hospitalized in a Sioux Falls NICU. And with Bellamy and Royce, all those whom we name now in the silence of our hearts before you. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, go now and render unto the world those gifts that our God has given you. Forgiveness, grace, peace, and mercy. And go forth receiving this benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join in singing our sending hymn on what has now been sown. peace belonging to God go forth and live in his creation share his forgiveness love and grace with the world thanks be to God congregation may be seated now as the usher comes to dismiss you from the back of the church to the front